Number 8. Lost Nazi Treasure For decades, stories of a secret stash of Nazi loot have run rampant throughout the treasure hunting community. But rumors became a reality when members of the US Army uncovered a huge hoard of gold in an abandoned German mine that dictator Adolf Hitler had hidden with the hopes of it never being discovered. When the army advanced from Frankfurt toward a small town of fewer than 3,000 residents, they expected to find people in need of aid. But the residents surprised the troops by spilling a secret. In a nearby abandoned salt mine, Nazis had hidden a treasure, one that had to be seen to be believed. When the troops descended into the mine, they were skeptical until they found a massive vault door inside, one that made the story of the local villagers that much more believable. After setting enough charges to blow open the door, the troops waited for the smoke to clear, and that's when the troops proved the rumor was real. Hidden in the abandoned mine, they found over 8,000 gold bars, 55 boxes of gold bullion, and over 3,000 bags of gold coins. And that's just the gold. The soldiers also discovered 60 bags of silver, a bag of platinum bars, almost 4,000 bags of currency, and a whopping 27 priceless paintings by the artist Rembrandt. Imagine their surprise at locating trunks and containers overflowing with ornaments, money, and gold. The U.S. Treasury Department now estimates the gold was worth almost $4 billion in today's value, with the silver coming in at around $4 million. Talk about a gold mine! Keeping the cash was risky for the Nazis, but it was also a necessity. They needed enormous sums of money to pay for various materials needed for weapons and bullets and to manufacture tanks and aircraft. So they resorted to looting on a massive scale, stealing from the gold reserves of Austria, Czechoslovakia, Belgium, and the Netherlands to fund their war machine. They also stole directly from both private companies and Jews, the very people they persecuted. After transporting all their stolen loot, they stored it in the 2,000-foot deep mine where it sat until the U.S. Army uncovered it, and they later returned it to the central banks in Europe. If you want to get a feel for what it was like for the soldiers who discovered the hidden cache, you can visit the Merkers Mines where curators set up replicas of the golden treasure for tourists. Number 7. Shipwrecks in Singapore 33.5 miles off the coast of Singapore, commercial divers made a historic discovery. The divers found two shipwrecks, one dating to the early 14th century and the other to the late 18th century off the island of Pedra Branca. The discovery almost didn't happen when a barge ran aground in the same place where the then still undiscovered treasures were waiting on the ocean floor. With two massive cranes on board, the barge was on the verge of collapsing into the historic Horsbro lighthouse when experts had to blow up the cranes. That's when the divers arrived on the scene to collect the debris, and they made the strange discovery. Instead of steel parts, the group found ceramics and priceless Long Quan greenware, a type of glazed Chinese ceramic produced in southern China from about 950 to 1550. After making the remarkable discovery, the group turned the objects over to a group running a maritime archaeological project, who soon realized the entire seabed was littered with ceramic shards. The Singapore National Heritage Board commissioned a series of excavations that had to be carried out one week at a time because the currents were so strong. The team performed salvage work and uncovered the largest haul of rare blue and white ceramics from the Yuan region that anyone has ever found. The discovery was evidence that Singapore was a prominent shipping hub long before Europeans arrived there. The discoveries also inspired the group to look beyond the first shipwreck. They ended up finding porcelain shards at a second shipwreck that dates to the late 18th and early 19th centuries when a ship called the Sha Mun Sha sank during a trek from China to India. Among the thousands of intact pieces, the group collected glass figurines and ceramics. They even uncovered four ship anchors and nine cannons. After hauling the items to shore, preservationists have to put the objects into fresh water to leach out the salt from the items. Only then can they catalog what they found and prepare the items to be displayed in museums for history lovers to enjoy. Number 6. Roman Cash in Britain Imagine looking for a lost hammer in your yard and uncovering the largest Roman-era stash of gold ever found. That's what happened to an Englishman who set out with his metal detector to find the missing tool. After getting a strong reading on the earth, Eric Law started to dig. It didn't take long for him to realize he'd found more than a simple hammer when he brought up shovelfuls of silver spoons and gold coins. Stunned by the discovery, Laws called both the police and the local archaeology society who came out the next day. Instead of digging the objects out by hand, they removed large chunks of earth to keep the precious items safe until they could get them to a laboratory. There, they realized just how massive the discovery was. Hidden underground, Laws had found nearly 60 pounds of gold and silver objects. Dozens of silver spoons and 200 gold objects were among the loot, as well as over 15,000 Roman coins. But the stash wasn't only all about the money. 
The objects gave insight into one of the most turbulent periods in British history when the nation separated from the Roman Empire in 410 AD. Without the ability to radiocarbon date the items, researchers used the age of the coins to figure out when someone might have buried them. Inscriptions on the coins as well as who is depicted on the money helped to estimate their dates. Looking closely at the coins, experts noticed something known as clipping, where the edges of the coins have been removed to make imitation Roman coins. Since this was done at a time after Britain separated from the Roman Empire when the emperor wasn't supplying gold or silver coins to Britain anymore, archaeologists think the coins came from between the years 408 to 409 AD. There's one more piece to the puzzle that gives a clue about who buried the hoard. Experts found the items packed in straw or leather-lined wooden boxes. That, plus evidence of use on some of the silver spoons, leads experts to believe the items were from a wealthy family who kept these treasured items only to bury them carefully for safekeeping. Even though there are still questions to be answered about the Hoxney hoard, the treasure gives a unique glimpse into the past. And if it wasn't for one forgetful man with a metal detector, these secrets may still lay hidden. Number 5. Notre Dame Tombs You don't have to go to Egypt to find ancient tombs. The recent discovery of previously unknown tombs beneath Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris has stunned the archaeological world. While workers were installing scaffolding to rebuild the spire that fell after the fire that struck the historic church in April 2019, they realized there was something buried in a cross-shaped area within the cathedral. The workers brought a special group from the Institute of Preventative Archaeological Research in to look into the mysterious anomaly, and they ended up finding something unexpected. The special group found several tombs, one that held a sarcophagus made from lead under the floor. Experts think the tombs date back to the 14th century. Investigators found fragments of painted sculptures they think were once part of church partitions. Another fascinating discovery was the original cathedral floor experts think was originally dug around 1230 when the cathedral was being built. Using a mini-camera, archaeologists got a peek at the interior of the sarcophagus. Inside, they spotted fabric, hair, and a pillow of leaves placed on the head of the person inside. Experts say that the type of burial was reserved for religious leaders, leading them to speculate that the person inside was once a high-ranking religious dignitary, which means the sarcophagus could belong to a bishop or archbishop. Have you ever been to the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris? What did you think of it? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Number 4. The Holy Grail of Shipwrecks a group of researchers who located the holy grail of shipwrecks using an underwater robot are sharing the news of their discovery with the world, but don't expect them to tell you where the stunning wreck is located. Just off the coast of Colombia, the Spanish galleon San Jose, which was sunk in 1708 by a British ship, was located by a submersible robot. As workers were above the surf, the Remus 6000 went on an important mission, hoping to locate the lost vessel. As the crew huddled around their monitors, something came into view, and when the robot got closer, workers realized there was something very exciting lurking below the surface. But this wasn't just any ship. The San Jose's distinctive bronze cannons, each engraved with decorative dolphins, came into view. The 64-gun, three-mast vessel was filled with $17 billion worth of gold, silver, and emeralds when it was sunk over 300 years ago. Multiple lawsuits are now surfacing over who has the rights to the wreck, keeping the priceless treasures from her cargo tied up in court. No one will see San Jose's loot in a museum until the legal battle is done. Number 3. World War I Coin Stash a family in Michigan cleaning out the house of a relative received a shocking surprise when they found an ammunition round from World War I. They immediately evacuated the house and called the local police, who sent in the bomb squad to take care of the artillery shell. After conducting an x-ray on the round, the bomb squad was relieved to know it wasn't live, but they had news for the family. There was something hidden inside. Upon opening the ammunition round, they found a small treasure of coins and bills that dated back to the 1800s and 1900s. But how did the hidden treasure get there? The bomb squad found the shell inside the home of an elderly woman whose nieces were cleaning out her home. No one's sure if it was the aunt who stashed away the money, but it was an impressive haul once her nieces got over the shock of finding the shell in her closet. Inside, several silver certificate banknotes that dated back to the early 1900s as well as multiple silver dollars, buffalo nickels, and old dimes that dated back to the 1880s make this a nice little nest egg. It might not be worth millions of dollars, but that doesn't make the discovery any less exciting. Number 2. The Staffordshire Hoard A decade after a British man discovered a stash of gold and jewel-encrusted weapons, conservationists are finally closer to revealing the origin of the priceless treasures. Considered one of the greatest British archaeological finds, the collection belonged to a Mercian king, who once ruled central England when it was considered the royal heartland of the kingdom. 
Included in the collection of 700 unique items was a stunning large processional cross that soldiers would have carried into battle. But it was a mysterious gold and garnet item that had experts particularly excited. It took years to determine what it was, and now researchers think the jeweled ornament sat on top of a bishop's headpiece. Strangely, both the cross and ornament were both deliberately bent before someone buried them. But why would someone desecrate such valuable objects? Was it to prevent them from being used by someone else? Almost 80% of all the items located were fittings from weapons. 50 of the sword pommels or large fittings at the top of the weapon's handles were made from gold and were extremely rare. In Anglo-Saxon England, gold was more readily available and instead of being reserved only for the weaponry of the king, it was converted into beautiful but deadly objects for the warrior class too. As experts took the last 10 years to study the objects, they have narrowed down the hoard's owner. Some think it points to King Penda, who ruled the area for three decades and defeated various East Anglian kings and monarchs. With no symbols or initials on the objects claiming ownership, researchers will continue to study the items to see if they can uncover the actual owner of the precious hoard. Number 1. Head of Dionysus Archaeologists excavating in Rome unearthed a haunting discovery while digging around the remains of a medieval wall near the Roman Forum. As they carefully removed centuries of earth and sand, they came face to face with the disembodied head of a statue of Dionysus, the ancient Roman god of wine, dance, and fertility. The statue was hidden in the ground, but what makes the discovery so shocking is the one-time piece of art had been recycled and was now being used as a building material. Experts date the statue's head to between the 1st century BC and the 2nd century AD when Rome was at its most powerful. Even as the statue was still partially underground, conservationists were in awe of the stunning depiction of the god. They think the figure's hollow eyes were once filled with glass or precious stones, and they believe that after a thorough cleaning, they may discover some of the original paint conserved on the statue. Dionysus was originally depicted as a mature male with a beard, but in later images, including this statue even after centuries underground, he was usually shown as having very delicate feminine features. Known to the Romans as Bacchus, Dionysus might have been worshipped as early as 1500 BCE by the Greeks. As the son of Zeus, you'd think that he would have held a prominent place among the gods, but the drama that surrounds one of his origin stories made Dionysus a bit of an outsider. His father Zeus seduced his mother Semele, who was immortal, and got her pregnant. Hera, who was not only the wife but the sister of Zeus, got so jealous that she tricked Semele into demanding Zeus reveal his true form to her. Since Semele was mortal, she died the moment she looked at him. Luckily, Zeus saved Dionysus by sewing him into his thigh, where he stayed until he was born. Soon after, he was taken and hidden from Hera's vengeful wrath, where he grew up learning how to make wine. As the last of the twelve Olympians to ascend Mount Olympus, Dionysus was already a little late to the party. But with a mortal mother and his upbringing away from the other gods on Mount Nisa, he was an outsider, a trait his future cult followers adopted with their subversive behaviors. One can't help but wonder if his curious reputation led his statue to be used as a filler for the ancient wall. Hopefully, as researchers study the ancient stone head, they'll be able to shed some light on how it got there. Number 10. Lamborghini Huracan – $500,000 Someone abandoned a $500,000 supercar on Hadley Road in London in 2019, about two and a half miles from the Premier League's Tottenham Enfield Trading Center. After deviating off the road as it went through the lush Enfield suburb, a passerby discovered the Italian-made beauty laying in a muddy trench. The Huracan, which has a top speed of 212 miles an hour, belonged to Bitcoin entrepreneur Michael Hudson. The following afternoon, the petrol businessman posted a video of the crash on his Instagram story. The Huracan isn't one of Lamborghini's most outrageous designs, but it's still a stunning vehicle. The wedge-like shape continues where the Gilardo left off, with a full-width lower grille and narrow horizontal headlamps adding more ferocity to the front end. Four exhausts on the car's outside corners stress its width, while an elaborate honeycomb grille mesh continues the hexagonal pattern found throughout the vehicle. The Huracan's design isn't just for show, it generates 50% more downforce than the Gilardo without the use of a large rear wing or projecting chin spoiler. It's unthinkable to abandon such a technical marvel, but some people have the guts to do so. Number 9. Rolls-Royce Centurion 500,000 The Rolls-Royce Phantom is a car created for the ultra-wealthy, and it's not rocket science to figure out why. These cars exude class and command respect from other motorists wherever they go. As brutal as ditching such a car is, someone somewhere dared to do it. In Russia, the one limited edition Rolls-Royce Centurion 
the once limited edition Rolls-Royce Centurion is collecting dust. The automobile was rumored to have formerly belonged to a celebrity. Looking at its awful state now, it's hard to imagine someone would choose to disgrace such a gorgeous piece of impeccable craftsmanship. The price tag on a Rolls-Royce will make anyone trying to make ends meet not believe their eyes. The cost is around 500000 raising the question, what level of insanity would cause someone to ditch such a car? The Rolls-Royce was conceived and constructed by a member of the design team that created some of the most innovative designs of the 21st century. The long rolling front fenders remind us of the class it symbolizes, and the performance is as enthralling as one would expect from a machine like this. The vehicle's entire body was a complex, detailed, and cost-prohibitive undertaking. Although they spared no money in creating what would go down in history as one of the most historically significant Rolls-Royce cars, someone left it to fester in the cold. Number 8. Ferrari F40 450,000 Uday Hussein abandoned this magnificent automobile because of circumstances rather than choice. He was the eldest son of former Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein. Uday purchased this vehicle as part of his remarkable collection, which totaled millions of dollars. Unfortunately for Uday, he didn't get to enjoy his fortune for long, since US Special Forces assassinated him in 2003 while driving his Ferrari F40. It is said to still be sitting idle in a garage in northern Iraq, collecting dust in the sweltering heat of the region. The car was not only covered in dust and sand when it was inspected in 2016, but it also lacked several essential electrical components needed to start. The automobile was utterly coated in sand when it was discovered. The engine was even worse. The sand was all over the place, which is unpleasant in any car, but it's terrible on a Ferrari of its worth. The car's odometer read fewer than 2,500 miles. Ferrari F40s appear to be the automobile of choice for Middle Eastern ruling families. The Sultan of Brunei is said to have 11 of them with his 7,000 car collection. Yeah, you heard that correctly, over 7,000 vehicles for one guy. Number 7. Ferrari Enzo 1.1 million One of the most sought-after hype cars in recent history is the Enzo Ferrari. They made and named only 400 after Enzo Ferrari, the founder of the famed Italian sports car manufacturer. Although the car cost roughly 600 grand when it was first released in 2002, its value has soared in recent years. The last Enzo ever manufactured, which belonged to Pope John Paul II, sold for 6 million at auction in 2015, while a restored crashed one sold for more than $1.7 million in 2016. That's why, in 2012, when photos of a dusty Enzo abandoned in a Dubai police impound surfaced on the internet, it was genuinely remarkable. Even more amazing is the fact that the Enzo has yet to be claimed. Authorities seized the automobile after its British owner abandoned it in a parking lot in 2011. This car is not for sale, although law enforcement in Dubai routinely sell such vehicles after a period of it being impounded. The Enzo, according to Interpol, was stolen or bought with stolen money. In Dubai's judicial system, there is also an ongoing legal fight concerning the car's ownership. But don't be concerned about its safety. Even though early photographs show the Enzo burning in the desert sun and caked in mud, the car was subsequently transferred to an indoor facility to avoid further damage. Number 6. Lamborghini Miura 484,000 The Lamborghini is the pinnacle of luxury driving. They're famed for combining strength, speed, and beauty features that competing brands struggle to match. When you think about abandoned automobiles, supercars aren't the first thing that comes to mind. Some owners let their valuable vehicles rot. Aristotle Anassis, a Greek millionaire, purchased a Lamborghini Miura S for a buddy, a musician known as the Greek Elvis. So what's the tale behind the Miura S that's been abandoned? What happened to it? And who is Greek Elvis? You're about to be surprised. When Aristotle Anassis married Jacqueline Kennedy, the widow of President John F. Kennedy, he became a celebrity. The legendary millionaire financed the construction of the Olympic Tower on Fifth Avenue in the 1970s and listened to the best Greek music of the period. Stamatis Kokotis, known as the Greek Elvis, was one of his favorite vocalists. Onassis was so taken with Kokotis' craftsmanship that he bought him a 1969 Lamborghini Miura S, just like that. The musician abandoned the expensive car in a Hilton hotel garage in Athens for nearly 30 years. 
Kokodas, a notoriously hairy man, fantasized about being a race car driver. He was known for pushing his vehicles to their limits. He sped around in a 2002 BMW, besides racing his brown 1969 Lamborghini Miura S. When a bedspoke steering wheel and four yellow fog lamps were fitted, many automobile fans thought the Miura S was ruined from the start. According to what is known about the car's history, the engine failed after 32,000 miles in 1972. Kokodas parked the automobile in the hotel garage while the engine was being repaired. The artist had lost interest in the vehicle and had not paid Lamborghini for the engine repair. So, the Miura S sat for 30 years in the garage. Eventually, thanks to the Olympic Games in 2003, the wheels started turning again. The Lambo was transported to a storage facility as the hotel underwent repairs to prepare for the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens. It was parked next to a scarlet Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Gullwing, which was also in terrible shape. That's how the Miura S ended up on the auction block. The abandoned Miura S was auctioned off in 2012 with a new engine. The winning prize was $483,000, according to reputable sources. Would you be willing to spend that much money on a classic car? Would you rather own a Lamborghini or a Ferrari? Tell me your choice in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and how about a thumbs up? Number 5. Bugatti Veyron 1.5 million. We'd call abandoning any brand of Bugatti car incredibly talented with irresponsibility. Why would I say something like that? While finding an abandoned fancy sports car isn't uncommon, finding an abandoned Bugatti Veyron is. A Veyron appears to have been abandoned and forgotten somewhere in Russia, leading to much debate about how the magnificent beast ended up there. According to reports, the Bugatti Veyron's label said Otto Loemann, a well-known dealership in the neighborhood where the abandoned car was located. The Veyron is said to have been involved in an accident in 2013 when it was rear-ended by an Aston Martin. But was it cheaper to just abandon the Veyron rather than repair it? And does the dealership have unlimited funds? Insurance issues or not, a famous automobile like the Bugatti Veyron should never be thrown out like junk. Any true car enthusiast would treat her with reverence and restore her to her former grandeur. What do you believe brought about such a bizarre situation? Number 4. Shelby Daytona 4 Million For any serious automobile collector, possessing a Shelby Daytona is the pinnacle of achievement. It may appear that a supercar with a stellar reputation has been abandoned for over three decades is a joke, but it isn't. There were just six Shelby models produced. It could have been in front of cameras and big, luxurious garages if it could travel back in time, but that moment has passed. The Shelby Daytona was once the supercar to beat Ferrari, and it's heartbreaking to see it in such poor form. If the car's designer, Pete Brock, had seen it in this state, he would never have gone to such lengths to make it so famous. The designer was a former racer who used this model to win some championships. He even finished certain races before the Ferrari, and one of his six triumphs is decaying and rusting somewhere 30 years later. He'd be devastated to see one of the Shelby Daytonas in such a state. A close examination of the vehicle reveals it can perform admirably in today's world. The wheels in particular reveal a secret strength that may be used at any time. Number 3. Maybach 57, 380,000. A Maybach 57 is yet another magnificent car for anyone prepared to spend as long as there are things to spend on. This Maybach has been parked in the same spot for years. Someone scrawled embarrassing remarks all over it to show how offended people were by the abandonment behavior. The encryptions were scrawled all over the car's dirty exterior. Perhaps even the interior is riddled with cobwebs and unimaginable antiques. Even the Maybach logo, which is usually there on the hood, has been removed. The supercar was nearly touching the ground. Perhaps a section of the car had already touched the ground to find solace from the loneliness. The front and back tires were deflated, which is why the car was nearly sitting flat on the ground. If the parking space owner had made a complaint or taken action, this car would have been removed without hesitation. It would have been bustling through the streets. This is one Maybach that has gone from opulence to oblivion. Number 2. Aston Martin DB5 580,000 Aston Martin is synonymous with James Bond, and it is a car that many British citizens and the rest of the globe adore. In the woods? Really? This is the very worst place to abandon a car like this. It doesn't even come close to the tranquility that surrounds its origin. It could have decomposed together with the leaves covering it if it had been abandoned for a few more years. The tires deteriorated since the back ones weren't visible. 
we see an automobile that has gone from rags to riches. This Aston Martin DB5 was rescued from its unimaginable plight, and some modifications and repairs were made to return it to its former glory. Historically, this was the first model car to achieve a 0 to 100 mile an hour acceleration time in less than 30 seconds. After some substantial garage workouts by some professionals, they placed this car up for auction, where it was expected to earn a price that was 100 times higher than the purchase price. Not that every abandoned car is this fortunate. Such a car would be extremely expensive to fix. Keep that in mind the next time you consider leaving your automobile in the woods. And number one. Bugatti Type 57S, 4.5 million. Vintage automobiles are incredibly valuable, not because of their qualities, but because of their age and history. Only 17 of these Bugattis were ever made, and they kept this one in a garage confinement for nearly four decades. This Bugatti was never seen on the road again after 1960. Only a few drives were made after the owner purchased it, and then it was doomed. The good news is that it was kept in a garage, which was the least the owner could do to keep it in working order. In today's world, finding such a car, particularly a vintage Bugatti, is quite difficult, which is why the price has risen. Old is without a doubt gold. The desertion resulted in something positive. In the same way that an old bottled wine improves and soothes over time, so does this car. The demand arose because of the shortage. It astounded the family who inherited the garage when the owner died in 2007 to learn that such a pricey machine existed. When the family learned that it could sell for a decent price at an auction, it became a stroke of luck. They expected to fetch more than five million if everything went according to plan. Isn't that incredible? It's like a prodigal son who has returned home. 10. Leopard 1 Tank Vlieland is a small Dutch island in the Varden Sea. Its western bank is home to a large sandbank called the Vlihors, which functions as a military exercise area and tank gunnery range. Along the shore, you can see a World War II-era Leopard 1 tank sitting sideways, partially submerged and half buried in the sand. Someone originally left the tank above the high tide mark, but it eventually sank during a storm. Porsche produced the Leopard 1 battle tank in West Germany during the Cold War. This was when the Berlin Wall separated the country into the capitalist West and the communist East Germany. The tank entered service in 1965 and quickly gained popularity throughout Europe and other parts of the world. It became the main battle tank for multiple countries. While most countries have now retired it from their militaries, the Leopard 1 is still being used in some places, including Greece, Turkey and Brazil. The Netherlands has retired all of its Leopard 1 tanks which explains why the Dutch military repurposed at least one of them for training and practice on Vlieland. 9. Missing Man's Jawbone In 2014, a jogger found a partial human jawbone with three teeth attached to it along the Lake Michigan shore. After failing to turn up any DNA matches in the FBI's database, authorities turned to a non-profit called the DNA Doe Project. The project is dedicated to identifying John and Jane Doe's and returning their remains to their families. Using a sophisticated technique called genetic genealogy, genealogists at the University of North Texas match DNA from the boat to relatives of a fisherman named Ronald Wayne Yeager. By the time they identified the remains, he'd been missing for over 21 years. Another set of partial remains had washed up elsewhere a few months later, and the nonprofit also identified them as belonging to Yeager. Jaeger vanished a day after setting sail on his boat in August 2000. He was 59 years old. The boat washed ashore 80 miles, 129 kilometers away in Wisconsin, but Michigan State Police and the U.S. Coast Guard found no traces of Jaeger until now. Hopefully, his family will get some peace now that they know what happened to him. 8. Creepy Dolls in early 2021, a baby doll covered in barnacles washed ashore on the Texas coast at Port Aransas. Researchers posted a photo to the Mission Aransas National Estuarine Research Reserve's Facebook page, captioning it the craziest beach find of all time. But things got even crazier when even more dolls appeared. Over 30 dolls littered the state's beaches. Most are covered in barnacles, some are stained green with algae, and others arrived with missing limbs. It's common for garbage to be found along the Texas shore because of how the currents flow in the Gulf of Mexico. But the dozens of dolls that keep showing up make for an unusual trend that's left researchers stumped. While their job is a focus primarily on wildlife, 
they're also trying to understand the doll mystery. Until then, all they know is that the barnacled babies could have fallen off a cargo ship or may have come from Mexico or any of the Gulf states. 7. World War II Artifacts During a recent outing at Port Aransas Beach in Texas, Amanda Ward and her family spotted a large object that they initially thought was just a rock. When they looked closer, they realized it wasn't a rock, but they weren't sure what it was. It seemed like a box wrapped in skin and was covered in algae and barnacles. Speaking with the local news station KSAT, Amanda described the object as having layers and layers of a stretchy tan-colored material on the outside. A group gathered around to try to figure out what it was, and someone cut into it with a knife. They discovered more layers of the material all the way through. Much to the dismay of the curious crowd, nothing more like treasure or money was inside. The item in question turned out to be a World War II-era rubber bale from the sunken German warship SS Rio Grande. They started washing up on Florida and Texas beaches in 2020, after previously appearing along the Brazilian coast. The Rio Grande's crew tried to scuttle the ship in early 1944 when they realized the American cruiser U.S. Omaha and the destroyer USS UA had spotted them. When that didn't work, the Germans abandoned the Rio Grande. The Omaha and UA sank it anyway. Ever since, the sea has swept away pieces of cargo from the wreck, and they continue to land at various beaches as far away as the U.S. Some of the washed-up bales featured a stamp that says Made in French Indochina pointing further toward their World War II origins. The region was a major rubber producer. The bale that Ward and her family found ended up being left on the beach. Not only was there no practical use for it, at over 200 pounds, 91 kilograms, it would have been hard to move. But at least there's some interesting history behind it. 6. Dismembered Feet Since 2007, at least 27 feet have appeared along the coast of British Columbia, Canada, and Washington State in the US. For over a decade, the detached limbs have baffled authorities while they tried to determine if foul play was involved. An investigation concluded that the feet all belonged to people who'd committed suicide or died in accidents in or near the ocean. The feet had separated naturally when their bodies decomposed. Because most of the victims were wearing sneakers, the limbs floated and the footwear slowed the decaying process. This explained why the feet were mostly intact when they washed ashore. Forensic pathologist Dr. Matthew Ord told the Sydney Morning Herald last year that they were found many, many miles from where the victims initially entered the water. The findings could help solve a tragic case in Australia in late 2020, when a wealthy businesswoman named Melissa Caddick vanished from her mansion in Sydney. Her disappearance was fraught with rumors that she swindled investors out of millions of dollars and fled to avoid being held accountable for her actions. Miss Caddick's severed foot was found several months later along the New South Wales coast. It was hundreds of miles from where she lived. Investigators initially struggled to understand how the foot could have traveled so far on its own. Based on its relatively intact condition, one detective theorized that Caddick was probably on the run for several weeks before she died. Dr. Ord used the severed foot cases from North America to point out that it's entirely possible that Caddick's foot traveled on its own through the current all the way from somewhere near her home to where it was found. Authorities remain skeptical since they'd never seen a case of human remains covering such a vast distance. But they were investigating the possibility, according to their last update. They're hoping to eventually find some answers. What would you do if you discovered something like this while you were visiting the beach? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. Narluga Skull it baffled a hunter when he spotted three strange-looking whales off the coast of Western Greenland in 1990. The mystery only deepened when he got his hands on one of the creature's skulls. At the time, DNA technology wasn't advanced enough to identify the creature with any certainty. Some experts speculated it was a deformed beluga. One researcher, Mads Peter Heide Jorgensen, theorized that it was a hybrid between a whale and a beluga, or a narluga. But until then, such a combination had never happened. The skull spent several decades in storage at the Natural History Museum of Denmark. By the time curator Elin Lorenzen took a fresh look at it in 2015, DNA technology had come a long way. This time around, scientists successfully extracted a sample. Heidi Jorgensen's prediction about the animal being a narluga turned out to be correct, born to a narwhal mother and a beluga father. 
It had a weird combination of traits, including beluga-like teeth and a twisted leftward spiraling bottom row of narwhal-like chompers. It lacked the narwhal's characteristic horn, which is actually a long tooth. Scientists had written in 1993 that the creature's teeth were unlike that of any known species, but that they seemed fitting for both narwhals and belugas. The DNA findings confirmed the team was on the right track with their suspicions after all. Whale researcher Travis Park, who was not involved in any of the studies, described the scar as almost exactly what you'd imagine you'd get if you mixed a beluga and a narwhal together. He added genetics rarely work out so cleanly. The skull is the first solid evidence that narlugas are a real thing. Until the discovery, experts believed it was nearly impossible for belugas and narwhals to mate, despite being members of the same family. The two species diverged from a common ancestor around 5.5 million years ago, and their shared gene flow ended roughly 1.25 million years ago. Surprisingly, they interbred after so long. Isotope analysis of the animal's teeth shows it dove deeper than either of its parents in search of food. Researchers know almost nothing else about it, and nobody's seen one since. 4. Seven Deer Head Visitors at Loyola Park Beach near Chicago were shocked in 2015 when they found a decomposing severed deer head on a stake. Someone had draped the morbid display with a red cloth featuring a strange image of a hand with five fingers, two thumbs, and a strange symbol painted on it. Local resident Steve Brown was taking his morning walk along Lake Michigan when he noticed the disturbing sight. He turned to social media for help to make sense of the strange exhibit. He wanted to know why someone might have created it and if there was any significance in their decision to place it along the shoreline. A spiritual therapist and tarot card reader named Elizabeth Ruiz told the website DNA Info that the deer's head might symbolize a Native American warrior. She said someone may have put it there to repel bad people and energy. She further explained that the use of the color red might represent fire or power. Regardless of its meaning, the decapitated deer's head wasn't on the beach for very long. A spokesperson for the Chicago Parks District told the press that the agency planned to remove the display. He said that nobody who worked there had ever seen anything like it before. The explanation behind the morbid symbol is still a mystery. 3. Rare Deep Sea Creature Marine biologist Bridie Allen was relaxing at Aramoana Beach on the New Zealand South Island recently when she noticed a man fussing around with something in the water. She approached him, and it shocked her to see that he was handling a monstrous fish measuring nearly 12 feet 3.7 meters long. Allen identified the serpent-like creature as an oarfish. This deep-dwelling species is incredibly rare, and humans seldom see it. In a tweet, Alan wrote that the creature was still alive but extremely weak. She explained a group had tried getting the oarfish back out into the ocean, but they were unsuccessful, and it soon became clear that it was going to die. Speaking with Newsweek, Alan said that she regretted not taking the fish as a specimen for further study. She said she didn't know how it ended up so far from its typical habitat, which was over 650 feet, 200 meters below the water's surface. The creature that appeared at Aramoana Beach was small for an oarfish. As the world's longest bony fish species, they can grow as long as 56 feet, 17 meters, and weigh up to 600 pounds, 270 kilograms. 2. Alien-like creature Drew Lambert was jogging along Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia recently when he came across something he'd never seen before. It was an alien-like creature he didn't recognize, so he snapped photos and took to social media for help to identify it. He wrote, It was about 1.6 feet, 0.5 meters long, with shark-like skin and human-like lips. Speaking with Storyful, Lambert said that based on the comments his post received, he believes the creature was a coffin ray whose intestines had ballooned from decomposition. Sea Life Sydney Aquarium supervisor Letitia Hannon also identified the carcass as a bloated coffin ray. Also known as the Australian numfish, the species commonly live in the shallow waters of the country's east and west coasts. Just weeks before Lambert's discovery, a man named Alex Tan encountered an animal that might be best described as extraterrestrial. He said it looked like a decapitated possum. When Tan's followers failed to come up with any promising leads regarding the animal's identity, commenters suggested asking Bindi and Robert Irwin for help. 1. A Tiny Boat 
In late 2020, Minnesota resident Lynn Bebo and her husband found a tiny red, white, and blue boat in a remote area on Apostle Island's national lakeshore along the Lake Superior coast. There was a message along the bottom of the miniature vessel stating, I am traveling to the ocean. Please put me back in the water, along with instructions for the finder to send information on their whereabouts to a school in Duluth, Minnesota. The little boat was one of the two that were released into the water back in 1993 and 1994 as part of a school project. Duluth Public Schools explained in a Facebook post that teachers Bonnie Fritch and Brenda Schnell released the boats into Lake Superior from Brighton Beach. Nobody can say for sure where the boat that reappeared was throughout its 27 years of adventure on the lake. Those who found it put a coat of varnish on it and set it back out on the water. Based on how protected the area they found the boat in is from the elements, Bebeau suspects it sat for years before she and her husband found it. She told CNN that finding the boat gave her a new appreciation for the unknown and a sense of wonder. In Bebeau's words, you just never know what you're going to find, so get out there and explore because there's stuff to be found. Thanks for watching. Have you ever found anything crazy on the beach? Tell us about it in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.